Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. Um, so we were under the, under the uh, understanding that I could never have a child. Simple as that. Um, you know, so X amount of years, you know, I, I did the test and the test like, nah, it's like, sweet. Uh, hey, uh, you know, you still want to be with me? And she's like, yeah, sure. Of course I do. And then it was one of those things where we got married <clears throat> and then what would have been three months later, four months later, um, my ex-wife, I'll, I'll say her name. Her name's Millie. Um, Millie goes to me, Hey, I've missed my period. I'm like, that's weird. Like because of her stress and her anxiety, she would just miss it occasionally just cause you know, it's connected to that. I went, you should do a, You should do like a pregnancy test. That'd be funny. So she did it and it came back positive. I'm like, mm, this is not funny anymore. <laughs> um, so she did another one. <clears throat> I was like, shit. So I'm like, okay, we're going to have to have a very serious conversation here because there's three options. It's mine, but we have medical documentation to say that it's, that that's not possible. It's somebody else's or it's your body. Like you've got some sort of cancer or tumor or something that is tricking your body to think that you're pregnant. Um, so then, uh, you know, on, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful day as a giant nerd on May the 4th, uh, Star Wars day, we met my son for the first time. Um, we did the ultrasound and I will never forget this because we, we both went in expecting horrible news, right? Because we knew, you know, I had to ask the question, but I knew it wasn't somebody else's, right? So it's either it's mine or it's, or it's a tumor. So we were like, it's got to be the second. There's no way it can be the first. So we're sitting there talking to the lady. Neither of us are looking at the screen with the ultrasound because it's, you know, we don't want to experience it. And I said, look, I remember saying to the lady, I'm like, look, this is what it is. This is what we're expecting, blah, 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 blah. And to the woman's credit, the nurse's credit, in the worst Arnold Schwarzenegger impression I've ever heard, she goes, it's not a tumor. And I fucking died laughing. And I looked up and, and then I saw my son. Um, and Whoa. yeah, so then I had to deal with that. So we, we, we were, <clears throat> she was already 20 weeks at this point. Right. So we take, we've lost a big hunk of time. So I had then six months to go, Hey, you just got married. So don't like, you know, you've not really experienced married life yet. Uh, you now have found out that you've broken science and that your world's about to change in a way that you thought was not possible. Uh, I go, okay, cool. Six months later, my son is born and it's amazing. Obviously, I clearly love my son. Um, but, you know, I you definitely clearly love your son. <laughs> I, I adore my son. Um, Look at this. He, this he, is you great. Know, he is the thing. He is my everything. Um, like, you know, it's very cliche, but like, you know, everything that I do is to ensure that that, that little dude's okay. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, so then, you know, my son was born, and then from that, I essentially had a huge old breakdown, right? Because, you know, I, I was working in a job that I hated. I was working in a call center. Um, you know, and like, you know a, a bit, I was working on the third floor of this building when none of the windows opened, for, probably for a reason, because uh, the job was garbage. Um, yeah, so I absolutely resented my job, and then because I was very lucky, and I, I managed to sneak, like, seven weeks of, of pat leave... So I spent, you know, a good close to two months with my son and then to go to a job that I resented that I was like, they're taking me away from my son. So mm. I started hating that and it started affecting me like horribly, like, you know, like that cancer I was discussing before. And, you know, from there I, I sought ways of self-soothing and that's where I got my heaviest because I was unhappy and, you know, didn't realize I was dopamine deficient. So I would eat because eating made me happy. And then I gained a stack away. That's how I got to the heaviest as I was. And, um... You know, right. yeah, so, so from there, and then I never really recovered from it because I never really properly processed it um, because life had to keep going because he kept growing. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it, let's go back a little bit, Ryan, because sure. I'm fascinated with the um, being having the insectomy at three years old. Hmm. Oh, then, I can go into detail if you want to get detail. No, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just want to know. <clears throat> First of all, I mean, we can go into the sectomy at three uh, if, if you're comfortable and want to do that. Oh, happy to. But it's also the, the point of 
where how did it start working again? Like, oh, don't, yeah, don't go down that path because that I don't have an answer for that one. Um, okay. uh, yeah, I don't know. So, I laugh a lot through this episode, by the oh, way. Oh, no, because you can if laugh. If you are because... watching it on YouTube, you can just see his expressions and the way you talk right now. I oh, can't I'm, help yeah, but I'm very myself. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah, the way to explain sort of why. So, um, due to being born so early, and even on top of that, like, my my mum and I have very clashing blood types. So at a point, her body just went, this is a foreign object. We're done. So I stopped growing because her body wasn't supporting me. And then I, w- then I was born super early. Um, and as a result, like the last things that develop when you're, um, you know, growing, you know, like your intestines, it's like a jacked up inside. It's horrible in there. Um, and as a result, you know, like so, some of your reproductive system. So the specific problem that I was having, there was an issue with my Vans Deferens, which is where the the latch that kind of separates the two from like, you know, when you go like to go to the bathroom or whichever, like that was kind of busted. So as a result, like urine was leaking through the Vans Deferens into my testicles and causing toxicity. So we're talking like straight up poisoning, right? So yeah. my parents... um you know, they had to make an incredibly tough decision. Like we do this, he stays alive, but we, we won't have grandkids later. So that decision was made and said all the bits of paperwork said, that's what it is. Yeah. And then you know, you've seen the, you know, the, you've seen the picture pop up. You've seen the picture behind you. Like he is unquestionably my son. Um, we are carbon copies. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like, Did- my little miracle. I'm not even a religious person, but I did consider it. Well, I was going to say that you would consider him a miracle. Ha- yeah, absolutely. Has to be. Yeah. Did, did you ever get any, so I'm, you've already answered it, I suppose, but you never got any scientific answers of how it did work. No, because it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, okay, well, all right. And I just mm. kind of left it at that, right? So the idea is yeah. like, oh, cool. Maybe we could have another kid. Um, we didn't, mm. but you know, we not, not for lack of trying. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you know, it was very much one of those things where I just like, just, it was just a once off and I'm so lucky that it did because if we, you know, if we look at the timing, like it lines up with our wedding day, which makes it even more amazing. Right. Like, yeah. um, yeah. And, and from there, like, yeah, I said, I had a pretty, pretty horrible breakdown and just to sort of process all that. And I didn't, I just kept going, kept pushing forward. And, um, so food became a, a, a factor. Yeah, absolutely. Cause like, you know, I was working at a call center that I hated and you know, if you've ever worked in a call center, like it's rigid, like it's like you, no, I have, yeah. you don't get to do shit outside mm. of the times that we tell you to do stuff. So yeah. I just needed to get out of that building. So on my lunch break at half an hour, I'm like, I'm going to go to the closest food place to get, cause you know, you can't fuck dare, don't dare go over half that 30 minutes. So I'd go get the quickest food that I can. And then I'd come back because there's no fucking way I was going to stay in that building that I hated around people that I like, yeah, some of them were cool, but most of them I hated, I hated everything about the job, but I, I, and I was, I felt so trapped. So that was my escape. My escape was to, to leave the building for lunch find something that would fill me with that happiness or that, that dopamine, um, pleasure, not and that, happiness. That ple- yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. Mm. Pleasure, not happiness. You know, it would mm. give me that happiness, give me that dopamine. And then it would allow me to go back and do the rest of my day. Um, uh, did I realize like the compounding effects of that? Because if the day was even harder, I could probably, I might get some food on the way home as well. Right. Like and then in, in the evening, cause you don't want to go to bed early because you don't want tomorrow to come quicker. Yes. Yeah. So then my sleep's all jacked up, like my eating's all jacked up and all Mm. those sort of things. Right. And all that compounded into someone that already hated themselves or didn't know a lot about themselves. So it compounded this much bigger version of self-hatred. And from there came, you know, a lot of self-sabotage and, um, just, just being a a damaging, like a damaging individual internally. And like, I'd, I'd always weirdly, uh, you know, prided myself on, I have a lot of shit going on, but it's all in here. Like it's Mm. not leaking out. And then, when I realize that it's been leaking out and it's been a slow leak that has suddenly created a, a quite a substantial pool, it, you know, I'm like standing there ankle deep in my bullshit and both my son and my, and my ex-wife are standing in this, this acid. I'm going to go, Oh shit. I can't do this. I can't do I, You know, and I was very, very lucky. And I, you know, I, I, I got ahead of it when we did and cause I knew that if it stuck any longer, yeah, it sucks. It was on my birthday. But I knew that if we kept trying, 
if we kept going, we would resent ourselves. We would resent each other. And then we'd, we'd be horrible. Like I come from a split family, right? Like my parents separated when I was seven. Um, and my parents- Did that have an effect on you? Oh, fuck yeah. Cause my parents hate each other. Like absolutely hate each other, right? Still to this day. Still to this day. And it was, and it had an impact. So, cause you know, in the same way that my son's a carbon copy of me, I'm a carbon copy of my dad. And then of course my mum, with a lot of her anger, even though she was the one that killed it or whatever, she not the victim in this scenario, let me tell you. Um, so, you know, so then I would get the brunt of that because I was very similar to my dad. Um, do he, does he have clear signs of neurodiversity as well? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So he, what's one thing he's dived into now? So, but he, you know, him and he's in, he's about to turn 60. So he's like, well, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and he's very, you know, he's been able, he's been someone that's been able to, to take their neurodiversity and shape their world and become incredibly successful. He's like a, you know, an executive at the nursing, at the, the nurse union. Um, uh, what is it? I forget what the acronym is. Um, you know, so like he, he's been able to achieve stuff because of, of his hangups and his traumas and all the things. And, you know, and my mum too, like I, I, you know, I've kind of crapped on her a bit here, but she's, she's also very amazing in her own ways as well. She came from a very broken and damaging family and still went out of her way to ensure that, yeah, you know, there were some things she didn't do well, but she always made sure we were fed. She always made sure there was a roof over her head. Like she was at no point was she ever a bad parent ever. Um, mm. But, you know, the way things were done and she was doing what she could for me at the time with the world that we had, you know, and, and that's something, you know, I, I used to harbor a lot of anger towards her for that, um, you know, in the last couple you of years. You didn't realize though, did you? No. And then now I'm like, no, I get it. Especially as a parent, like parent yourself and, mm. and like you... You know, it's one of those things like I'm, what, 34? I'm only just getting in a decent space. You know what I mean? Like my parents were also in their mid-20s when they had me. And like I fucking had no idea what I was doing in my mid-20s. It's what, mm -hmm. what the expectation that we have on our parents is just insane because we don't know any different. And then when you realize, like, what am I doing? What was I doing in my mid-20s? Like, not much. And, you know, and then they had like a house and a you know, family and you know, this, that, and the other. And I was like, oh, I just finished university. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Can I make a podcast in my back room? You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, mean, I didn't figure out until I was 38, mate. You know? I, yeah. I didn't go on a life changing <clears throat> journey. You know, I was, uh, my bullying was happened, you know, when I was 32, but I went on a journey two years ago when I had my gallbladder removed. And I was 20 minutes away from being in a coma because mm. of sepsis setting oh, in and, and, and it comes down to probably filling in the holes. I, I'd, I'd come out of what I'd consider a dream job, but it wasn't for me. And I was going into a dark space. Obviously I'm not going to talk about that on air cause I don't want people to feel upset, but, um, you know, I was going into a dark space being at that place. Um, even though to me it was a dream job, but I was eating shit, staying up late and I'd had autoimmune issues in my lower back. And that's inflammatory. So that was coming from inflammatory foods. And I was not sleeping for years, impacting going to bed late, eating chips upon chips, crisps to those English people. And I was eating big, hey, big bars of chocolate. And and I was taking meds for my uh, ankylosing spondylitis, anti-inflammatories, strong anti-inflammatories. And I knew I couldn't be on them for life, but I was happy just to be sleeping again. Mm. Right? But I knew they were going to do damage to me inside. And before you know it, I'm on a bed in surgery and um, having what I thought was an anxiety attack, but it wasn't. It was coming from the gallbladder, mm. get rushed into hospital, had heart check. They cleared me, went back near, a few days later because I'd turned orange. Oof. And before you know it, um, I was 20 minutes away from being in a coma. My partner got the phone call saying, prepare for the worst tonight. Yeah. Might not be coming home tomorrow, basically. Brutal. And from that, I started to study the brain, started to study human biology. And I thought, fuck this. Um, changed my life. Casual teacher, start the podcast. Yeah. Write a book. And I'm like, screw this. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to all depths. I, I want to learn and I want to prolong my life. And, and if it means I'm going to get an extra 10 years with my family without relying on people or something to keep me alive. Great. Yeah, no, it, you it know is. What I mean? Yeah, no, it's it, it's a it's it's amazing those moments, like yeah, um, yeah, because you know, as as we said, you were touching upon, like you know, for for you, that was that was your moment that like set on a whole different path, and yeah. for me, it was that you know, for me, it was that it was that marriage, right? Like, yeah. you know, I 
my my family are full of split family, you know, it's broken divorces, etc. Yeah, um, we are too. And it, it was yeah. one thing that I never wanted to do, and like no one ever goes getting gets married expecting that's going to happen, mm. but. You know, like I, I felt like such a giant failure and I was just littered with this guilt and shame because we were the first separated family on, on my ex-wife's side and, you know, we're just at one of the many on my side. I wanted to be that point of difference. Um, you wanted to break the cycle. I wanted to break the cycle. And so, of course, like, you know, I, I spent a big hunk of the time between then and now, like, dealing with that guilt and shame. And that guilt and shame ate me. It destroyed me. <clears throat> And but that guilt and shame was also then what helped shape the philosophy that I have now. And it's not even my philosophy; I totally stole it. So what is it? There's so there. I'll, I'll provide the context <clears throat> because I can never just say an answer. Apparently, <laughs> my my favorite gaming franchise in the entire world. Um, and particularly these two games is God of War, especially specifically one from 2018 and then God of War Ragnarok. These are stories that are, you know, soft reboots of the franchise, but but they were given a much more grounded and real space. So Kratos is the character, he's the, he's the former God of War of the Greek mythology um, in which he had literally killed everyone, like all the gods, the entire pantheon, because he was wronged um, back in the day. And he, he sought a path of vengeance and anger. In this game, he is living a more reclusive life. He's now um, in the Norse mythology. He has a young son named Atreus, who's about six, um, and his wife has passed, and they need to go take her ashes to this mountain to be spread because she's. It turns out she's a giant, so you've got to go to Jotunheim where you can go and spread her ashes across this very important um, uh, mountain for their culture. So <clears throat> because of Kratos' experience with his dad literally being Zeus, and, you know, he, Zeus is a horrible, horrible dad. So he has, you know, come out of all that and he goes, I need to lock my shit in because I don't want to connect with anyone because anyone I've connected to has, has had pain and or have died or whatever. So as a result, yes, he's got this young son, but there's an emotional distance. It's a coldness. And... Throughout this game, it's all about them rebuilding that connection and creating the father and son dynamic. And I'm getting emotional just talking about it. Um, that was nice. <clears throat> where the whole premise of Kratos's journey is he doesn't want his son, he doesn't want Atreus to be him, to become him, because he knows of the pain and the struggles that come with being that person and having the burden of, of all those things inside him, you know, and then there's, there's a, an expression that it said early on that kind of comes later. So they go on their first hunt together to go hunt this deer. Um, and Atreus misses the shot and he apologizes, but Kratos in an aggressive tone is like, don't be sorry, be better, which in that context is painful if you're Atreus, but without realizing that is the throughput of that in of both of those games. It's not a, you know, it's the understanding of like, yes, you have made a mistake. You fucked up. You can be sorry. You can be sorry all you want, but sorry doesn't fix. You can't change what happened behind you. You just ensure what's happening in front of you. So don't, you can be sorry for the past, but be better. Change the future. Make it what you want it to be. And that was the philosophy that I took into rebuilding my life. I went, I have done all these things and they weren't awesome. Like I'd never, you know, I was never violent or abusive. I was just accidentally toxic to everyone around me. And, you know, comparatively to some people, you know, how some partners have, tr tr you know, affected each other it's it's on a different scale but to me i i felt horrible for for the person i had become and i so yeah i was like well yes and i can't be sorry i can be sorry and i can mean it because i did and i do but it doesn't mean anything you know i i you know i i made the choice to end my marriage because i needed to be better i needed to you know i was a, i was a, a 
you know, a reasonable partner. I was a reasonable father. They never went without. I was always there, but I was not there. You right? weren't present. I wasn't present because mm. I was dealing with my other shit. I was focused way too hard in making content and trying, you know, sourcing dopamine in other places, like including my weight loss journey, right? Like turns out, you know, being an ambassador for a weight loss product and then going to the gym five, six days a week is really good for dopamine. So, you know, that, had an impact on my marriage too. And it, it's why it's taken me a long time to, to get over that hurdle and be able to go to the gym again and not feel guilty. Um, you know, so yeah. So I was like, well, I've got to go on this journey. I've got to be better and I'm going to fucking prove it. And I'm going to show my son. I'm going to show my ex-wife. I'm going to show, well, then I didn't have a partner, but now I do. I'm going to show my new partner. I'm going to show my friends. I'm going to show my job. Everybody that has ever been connected with me, I am going to become the person that that I want to be. Like, that is me, but better. So, like, all mm. the, you know, I would look at all the things I disliked about myself. I reflected upon them and I broke them down. And then I would ask myself, why, 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 why do you do this? Why did you, you know, like it, it gets to a point where you can't answer the question anymore. And then you find the root of where it is and what it stems from. And then, then you can work on that because everything else that we do it, you know, when you come with, you know, working in mental health or working with, you know, children or whatever, it's that, you know, um, it's, you know, behavior, is a is an expression of a of a different problem so someone that talks back you're or whatever you know it, it's rooted in something else it's rooted in power or control or just the need for you know a, a, the need for attention comes from wanting to be seen and valued and if you don't get that you find other ways to get it so i was like all right well i need to fix all these things i, I saw my behaviors what was the cause let's break it down and completely rebuild myself Mm. Um, yeah, and the idea, yeah, as I said, be 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 better. That's what I did. It's, it's deep. <laughs> when did you stand in front of the mirror and see that toxic person? Then do you think towards what? the end? Yeah, towards yeah. the end of the marriage, and it was it was just like because you know at and that what point, was it, what toxicity? Sorry to cut you off. What toxicity did you did you see? In a the lot mirror? of it came from because yeah. So I hit my lowest weight as my journey during that week right? The week after my marriage. Um, hmm. But I was around about that window, right? That was, and I looked at myself because I had thought that if I, you know, got physically healthier, um, I would get improved, you know, how the world would perceive me, perceive me would be different. And in turn, I would begin to love myself finally. Uh, it didn't, you know, it just like, made those things more apparent. So as I'm standing there looking in this mirror at, you know, the, 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 the lowest I've ever weighed since like year seven. So I was like 13 years old and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I should be happy, but why am I not happy? Mm. What am I missing? And yeah, it was just a broken person. Um, you know, and then yeah, shortly after I got diagnosed and then you know, I got started getting medicated and, you know, that, that, that medication was the, the, you know, the, the glasses to my vision impairment. Like it helped me see the world differently. It helped me understand myself and it took away a lot of these barriers I didn't know existed that then allowed me to grow. Cause like when your head's not as loud as it once was and, and you know, that anxiety level is lower, like you're willing to face different challenges and you mm. can you can teach yourself to respond differently because you now have the emotional bandwidth to, to take it on um and, and uh, process it and as i mentioned like that that like that weird sense of calm and seeing the world in hd and i'm like okay well what, this is the problem that i'm facing let's let's deal with it let's break it down um and fix it because for me is that I, is that I, it came from when I looked at my son, like I saw, you know, I got my diagnoses and I understood myself and I looked down at him and as he is a carbon copy of me, I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of that in you, bud. I don't want you to, you know, very similar to Kratos. I don't want you to have the life that I had. I don't want you to get into your thirties and realize that like every work problem you've ever had, every, you know, like social, every clash, every, everything that you faced Hey, spoilers, it's been you all along. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's very easy to go, ah, it's everyone else. But like, no, no, it's you. And it's very hard to look at yourself and go, 
you have been the problem. And it's a problem that you didn't know existed or you didn't know the answer for. And then in that moment, I went, you're the problem, but you have the answer. So when I looked at him, I said, I do not want you to have that same experience. Let's make, you know, I said, be better. I want to ensure that I can't change my past, but I can ensure that his future is going to be better. And then by doing so, like, you know, we got him medicated and he started to succeed and do all these other things. And then a lot of ASD traits started popping up. I'm like, well, you are a carbon copy of me. Shit. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.